On June 7, 1998, a 49-year-old African-American man was brutally tortured and murdered in one of the most horrific, racially motivated hate crimes the country has ever seen. The man, James Byrd Jr., was dragged to his death after being chained by the ankles to the back of a pickup truck by three white men, John King, Lawrence Brewer, and Sean Barry. The crime, so inhumane and shocking, would play a major role in the passage of federal hate crimes legislation. Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. My name is Joe, the host, and thank you for joining. I want to personally welcome anyone listening for the first time today. If you don't mind, stand up so that everyone can see you and can look at you so you can feel really awkward. My bad, this isn't church. You can remain seated, but if you'd like, if you would, turn and greet the neighbors sitting beside you. Tell them that you're happy to see them today. Before we get going with the story today, this is your reminder to subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts and connect with 10 Minute Murder on social media. Links are in the show notes of this episode as well as 10minutemurder.com. Now to the story. James Byrd Jr. was born in Beaumont, Texas on May 2nd, 1949. He was the third of nine children to his parents, Stella May Sharp and James Byrd Sr. Growing up in Jasper, Texas, James's class was the last class to graduate from Jasper's segregated J.H. High School in 1967 before it was combined with Jasper High School as a part of the city's desegregation plan. His family was heavily involved in the church. His mother worked as a Sunday school teacher and his father served as a deacon at the Greater New Bethel Church. James was also heavily involved by singing and playing the piano as a child. Although James excelled in school, he chose not to follow his two older sisters' footsteps and did not attend college. Instead, he married three years after graduating high school and fathered three children, Renee, Ross, and Jamie, before he divorced his wife in 1993. James struggled with alcohol addiction and worked as a vacuum cleaner salesman. Between 1969 and 1996, James did have some trouble with the law. In 1996, James returned to Jasper in hopes of turning his life around. Upon returning, he joined the local group of Alcoholics Anonymous and was well-liked among the other group members. Everyone was pleased at the progress James was making in his personal life. On June 7, 1998, James spent the day with some family and friends at his parents' house. He left the house at around 2 a.m. to make the trek back to his apartment. He didn't drive and didn't own a car, so he traveled everywhere on foot. As James was walking down a dark road back to his apartment, three men pulled up alongside him in a gray pickup truck and offered him a ride. Those three men were Sean Barry, age 23, Lawrence Brewer, age 31, and John King, age 23. They'd been driving around that night, drinking and looking for women. And not wanting to walk the rest of the distance back to his apartment in the dark, James eagerly accepted the offer of a ride and jumped into the bed of that gray pickup truck. Sean, who was driving the truck, had previously been introduced to James, so the two knew each other. Witnesses would later testify that they saw James laying in the back of that truck as the men drove east out of town instead of toward James's apartment. The three men stopped the truck in a small clearing in the woods where James tried to fight them off after they pulled him out of the truck's bed. The fight caused the grass to be upturned and the dirt disturbed, with police later finding a broken beer bottle and various other items dropped as James fought for his life. The men eventually got the better of James. There were simply too many of them and just one of him. They spray-painted his face, urinated on him, and chained him to the back of the truck by his ankles. They then began to drive the truck, dragging James along behind. The three men claimed that James had been deceased before they did so, saying that they had slit his throat in the woods. However, his wounds testified otherwise. It's believed that James was still alive as the three men dragged him down Huff Creek Road. James tried desperately to protect his head, keeping it elevated as they first drove along the dirt before turning onto the paved road. He was dragged for roughly three miles on the asphalt. His ribs were broken from the bouncing, and his skin was scraped off his bones from the friction on the road. 
James's body was tossed around on the road. He bounced upwards and was flung into a ditch, and his body hit a metal pipe. The force of which he hit the metal pipe and the truck's speed was enough to sever his arms and neck. The 49-year-old James was decapitated. Investigators believe it wasn't until this moment that James Bird Jr. finally passed away, having been subjected to the inhumane torture of being dragged behind a truck for at least a mile and a half. After being decapitated, the three men continued to drag James's body for another mile before dumping it in front of an African-American church on Huff Creek Road. They then headed off to attend a barbecue. The next morning, a motorist found James's decapitated remains. Upon investigation, police discovered a wrench with Barry written on it along the area where James had been dragged. A lighter was also found with the word possum inscribed on it, which was John's prison nickname. The SS in the word possum was written to resemble the Nazi SS insignia. Lawrence and Sean were well-known white supremacists, so the murder was determined a hate crime, and the FBI was called upon less than 24 hours after the discovery of James's remains. Police found the remains of James in 81 different places along Huff Creek Road. Fast forward, and all three men were found guilty of capital murder. During the trial, Sean turned against the other two men, claiming they were solely responsible for James's death. As a result, Sean was the only one spared from the death penalty, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Sean Allen Berry will be eligible for parole in 2038. John King and Lawrence Brewer were not as lucky as Sean and did not escape the death penalty. Instead, they became the first white men in the history of Texas to be sentenced to death for a hate crime for the murder of a black man. John King was executed by lethal injection on April 24, 2019 in Huntsville, Texas. John had previously been involved in a white supremacist prison gang and he was extremely covered in racist tattoos, including KKK symbols, a swastika, and a visual depiction of a lynching. Lawrence was executed by lethal injection on September 21, 2011. He showed no remorse for his crimes right up until his death. On the day of his death, Lawrence stated, quote, As for any regrets, no, I have no regrets. He continued to say, I would do it all over again to tell you the truth. James Byrd's only son, Ross, actively opposed the death penalty for his father's killers, citing his Christian faith. James's two daughters, however, attended and witnessed the execution of John King and Lawrence Brewer. At the time of Lawrence's execution, it was common practice to allow death row inmates in Texas to choose their final meal. However, this practice was stopped because of Lawrence. The night before his execution for his final meal, he ordered an enormous amount of food. He ordered pizza, burgers, chicken, steaks, an omelet, a pound of barbecue meat, fajitas, a tub of ice cream, a tray of peanut butter fudge, and three root beers. However, when this food all arrived, Lawrence simply said he wasn't hungry and the food was wasted. The torture and murder of James by three white men ignited a large-scale debate about the current state of race relations in America. James Byrd's death by dragging led the state of Texas to pass hate crime laws, which later led Congress to pass the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crime Prevention Act which is commonly known now as the Matthew Shepard Act in 2009. The act, signed into law by President Obama, expands the 1969 United States federal hate crime law to include crimes influenced by a victim's actual or perceived gender, sexual orientation, race, or disability. That's 10-Minute Murder for today. Brief and bingeable true crime. Thank you for listening, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, wherever you are listening right now, please subscribe to 10 Minute Murder. If you're new here, cool, you're probably not subscribed yet. Do that now. Even if you're not new here and you just have to type in manually 10 Minute Murder every time you want to listen to the podcast, if you just subscribe, it's easier. You just open the app and boom, the latest episodes are already downloaded and already ready for you to listen to. If you are not connected with 10 Minute Murder on social media, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but it's not cool things, obviously. Connect with 10 Minute Murder on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links for that are in the show notes of this episode. Or you can go to 10minutemurder.com, and uh, all the links for that are there as well. Even easier, though, you can just type in 10 Minute Murder wherever you're trying to follow the podcast, and it's going to pop right up for you. 
If you have an idea for a story you think I should cover on this podcast, it's very easy to get in touch with me. You can send me a direct message on any of those social media platforms or an email to joe at 10minutemurder.com. Joe at 10minutemurder.com. And finally, it means the world to me that you guys really enjoy the podcast and share it with your friends and family. And I know that you're doing that because, first of all, it's growing. How else would it grow if people weren't sharing it? And second of all, because sometimes when people reach out to me, new listeners to the podcast, they'll tell me, uh, so-and-so let me know about the show. And I'll recognize so-and-so's name as someone that, uh, you know, likes and comments on different things on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I know that it's happening and I really do appreciate you guys doing that. So keep doing it. The more the show grows, the more time and effort that I can put into this thing and it'll continue to get bigger and better. Thank you for listening to 10 Minute Murder. Be safe and make good choices.